Hello, Ken Spriggs here with a uh, model review of the brand new Monarch kit, the Moon Suit. Uh, and um, this has been advertised for a little while and they finally brought it out. It's a, uh, it's a concept suit from the 60s whenever they were looking to go to the moon and uh, some different ideas they had for creating a spacesuit. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right, and this is the brand new model by Monarch that just came out. Uh, of uh, classic concept of the moon suit back from 1961 uh, entitled Allen B. Hazard Lunar Exploration Suit 1961. I'll talk a little bit more about him uh, and, and there's some info in the model kit about that. Uh, I don't know if this was ever made into a model previously um, but it definitely has that kind of retro future look from the 60s that I grew up with. I was born in 1961 and um, and certainly that was one of my introductions to to model kits and science fiction. Uh, in fact the little the little satellite that comes with it is kind of reminiscent of uh, my first model that I ever built that I had um, I had done an homage to on uh, this build here of the little mini spin drift if you can see the little box there, little satellite, which was uh, Project Vanguard from Hawk Models. So what I had actually done with that model kit, kind of showing my my love for science fiction at that time, I probably got that like in the early '70s or late '60s, and instead of building the satellite it had two clear domes I took those and put them together and made like a flying saucer with it <laughs> kind of reminiscent of the Jupiter 2 from from Lost in Space uh, I might have even painted it silver but uh, that was my first model kit that I can remember as a child and then the actual first science fiction model kit was the Spindrift from Aurora which um, that that model I did like a tribute to and homage to uh, so definitely goes back to Harkin in my childhood. I really liked a lot of the science fiction, the realistic science fiction concepts from then. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the model kits. Glencoe, I believe it was. And there were some other ones that made like this, the big ring space station and the, the little couple stage rockets that, um, that were sort of concept ideas but weren't actually implemented in the final, in the final, uh, Saturn V and other things that went up to the moon. Uh, and this is another example. So they didn't actually make this spacesuit for the, the astronauts to go on the moon, but apparently it was a concept idea that they were looking at, uh, that they would, they would have them go there and, and use. It looks like this is an actual photo of the model, which is pretty cool looking. A little figure in it. The flag, you get a little flag that you can put on the base. So, all right, so here's the, here's the box. Uh, the artwork is the same around it. The back is just showing their other kits that they have. The fly, obviously, is the last one I built from them. So, uh, and also their, their boxes are unusual where they're hinged and they open up like that. And then they, uh, they have the, the contents. So, all right. So let me go ahead and take out the, um, the various bags of sprues, and then we'll take a look at, at the model kit itself. All right, so the first two bags, uh, I took them out of the plastic. Uh, the clear parts are actually in another, almost like a, a cellophane wrapped around it within the plastic, which I'll just leave on there, which is kind of cool. So uh, the base, kind of cool, little lunar lunar surface, uh, there's a, a little square for the plaque for the name of the spacesuit on it, the little circular part for the satellite part that goes down into it. There's a post for the flag, and then of course the figure stands on this base as well. Uh, you have some clear parts, so you have this big rounded part here that goes on the inside of the suit for the whole rounded face area around where he's standing, and a couple of other little clear parts that go inside of the kit. It's kind of cool. All right, let's 
go ahead and look at the uh, the next bags. All right, so the next sprue has the main spacesuit parts. So you have, uh, this is the front, here's the back of course. I believe this is the bottom. Uh, his legs look like they're protruding from the bottom. There's no holes for the legs themselves. They just kind of go into the pin parts. Uh, actually, that might be... I'd have to look and see on the instructions. Um, I think that's the top. But we'll have to take a look. Uh, you have some other pieces here. I believe these are for the, the satellite. That's going to go on the base. All right. You can take a look at the next one. All right, so this is mostly parts of the figure. Now, he's not a complete figure uh, because you're only going to see his upper torso, his head. Uh, they have his hands and parts of the spacesuit. Uh, there are some controls here, a little rock that he's holding in his hand, the lunar rock. Uh, his hands are made to hold some things. I guess there's supposed to be a, a little a little pick that he's using for the rock. Some other little parts of the kit. The bottoms of his feet. There's some pieces right here. And then this little interesting little critter with his little head. We'll talk about him in a few moments because that's really interesting. Uh, and I've already looked at the instructions, so there's a little hint on there on what that's supposed to be. All right. All right, so the other parts are molded in white. Uh, this sprue is all in black, so of course, obviously, we've got his legs, which come in two halves, his arms, which are also in two halves. So, I'm not sure how much of a cleanup you're going to have to worry about. The smooth parts are fine, but these ridged parts here that are supposed to be flexible, hopefully they marry together fairly well so you don't have any real obvious seams to worry about. Uh, as far as those these are supposed to be black so black is is very good at hiding seams so we'll have to wait and see how that looks um, and then the feet of course are hollow underneath because in the last sprue I showed that the uh, the bottoms of the soles are separate pieces that go into there so all right and then here's the last sprue and this one's in gray so you have the inner part where the figure goes on to, uh, his torso and everything goes on to that. You have, yeah, there's the little pickaxe that he uses in one hand for the rocks. A few other smaller parts. The nameplate, <clears throat> which says Moon Suit MK1, Allenby Hazard Lunar Exploration Suit 1961. You have the little antenna parts that go on top of it. And it looks like some other antenna parts that go onto the satellite. Uh, and then this ring, which, um, which also goes around uh, the top of the suit and, uh, and connects into it from right there. So, all right. All right, and then the last things that you have, you have the instructions, which I'll open up here in a moment. We'll go over those. Uh, you have this double-sided flag, which you're supposed to fold in half and make the flag that goes on to the plastic stand for it. You have one decal, which is the big... Well, it's funny because it's an eight, but then they show on the picture illustration a three. So I'm not quite sure why they did that. <laughs> but we'll take a look. Um, yeah, that is really odd. That they've included an eight instead of a three. It almost looks like a sticker. Might be a sticker. We'll have to take a look at the instructions, but uh, but yeah, they gave you an eight instead of a three. Uh, then they have this uh, this little flyer, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's it's written by the son of Alan Hazard or Hap Hazard uh, by David Hazard, and he talks about his father. Apparently, this suit was featured on the cover of Life magazine back in 1962. Looks like April 27, 1962. 
Um, I'm guessing that he was in the suit. It's it's interesting. I've read this through. I mean, he talks a lot about his father, and his father flew flew in the military. He assisted with different things. Uh, they show some pictures. I'm assuming of him in the suit back then. But unless I'm missing something, the only thing it really says is the model kit you have purchased represents my father's close association with the world's early exploration of space. The spacesuit was featured on the cover of Life magazine, and it was an early concept for the systems now being researched 60 years later for further moon exploration and other planetary body exploration. It doesn't say that he actually made it, designed it, or created it. So I don't know if he was just inside of it, possibly. I'm not sure. But uh, obviously... He's the namesake for it. Um, so, but it does give a nice, interesting background to him and shows some, what I'm assuming are pictures of the actual suit. And then this one seems to have an eight on it. And this one has a three. So I don't know what's going on with that. Not really sure. But anyway, that's kind of interesting. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the instructions. All right, so here are the instructions, and it's just a, a single fold-out. On the front, you have the, um, the imagery. Again, oddly, they have the three on the front, but they have the they have an eight here and a three. I'm not sure. So that's a bit confusing as to why they included an eight and not a three. It does say that it's a decal and not a sticker. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the at the instructions so pretty straightforward so it starts off with uh the it actually calls this the luna 2 probe so but it is from the soviet union they were actually the original country to launch satellites into space they launched the first satellite into space where we were the first to go to the moon of course <clears throat> Um, so you have the different parts for that that go together. Uh, you have the assembly of the figure, which is his head in two parts, his upper torso in two parts. And uh, he has no arms, of course, inside the suit because they're supposed to be going outside into the um, mechanical arms. The control panel, the little plate that he's on, on the inside. And this, Okay, so that rounded part, let me get that. All right, so this rounded part is the top. This is the bottom. This is where the legs go into. And there's some windows here that are looking down. But this is the top. There are some antennas on here that stick out. And a couple little uh, bars to grab onto. Some other pieces there. Yeah, so, yeah, so this piece is the bottom. This is the front. This is the back. Uh, and I was mistaken, the um, the legs and arms are not black. They're white or possibly silver. I guess white. The boots are black. So the majority of the suit is just white. Which I'm wondering why they made those black then. <laughs> okay. But then uh, you've got his two halves of his arms with his, his two hands, one's holding a rock, one is holding the pickaxe. You have his two legs go together and the two soles of the boots go on there. There's some clear parts that go and some other parts that go in the front of the, the main spacesuit housing. And as you can see, he goes down inside of that this ring goes around the top. His arms and legs go on, go onto it, and then you you have this one clear piece, and then you have these other framework, which go along that clear part. Probably have to use some canopy glue to glue those on, so you don't mar up that piece, because that's all one piece. That clear ring right there. Then they go together. All right, and then you have the post for the flag, which, as I showed, was a, a double-sided part that you fold. 
the nameplate, the satellite, and he goes on to the lunar surface. So, all right. So one other thing, and I had mentioned it, I mean, because I was looking through it and trying to figure out what this little slug-like critter is with a little head. <laughs> he reminds me of uh, the first men on the moon with the, um, I forget what they were called, but they were sort of insect-like creatures. Uh, so there's nothing in any of the instructions. There's no pictures or images of those parts showing anywhere where you would build it and put it onto the lunar surface. But what it does say, so you got your, you got your final assembly, and it says, cut, drape, and affix the U.S. flag to the flagpole, place the flagpole to the base, place the nameplate to the base, place the Luna 2 probe to the base, do not cement, slide the rock hammer in Hap's left glove, place Hap on the lunar surface, affix numerical decal to the front of the suit. Uh, it does say your decal is not a water slide. Oh, so it is not a decal, not a water slide decal. It is a UV DTF decal to apply prep model surface with rubbing alcohol if you can read that. Peel and discard decal paper backing. Press decal onto model. Gently heat decal with a hair dryer. Peel and discard carrier film. Interesting. Leap for joy in 1-6 gravity. You're done. Interesting. But then there's this little line. <laughs> which I noticed. It said, Our moon is a mysterious place. A bonus piece is included to customize your space adventure. So, I like that, and I'm probably definitely going to include it, the little little space creature. Maybe even paint him green or something so we get a little bit of color on this otherwise. <laughs> Just all red and white and lunar surface kind of thing. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Interesting. <laughs> and apparently his shirt is supposed to be... He's wearing a shirt underneath. It looks like it's red in that picture. Yeah, looks like it's red. And he has on he has some suspenders. So he's just wearing a normal outfit underneath this spacesuit rather than wearing a uh, another special kind of suit. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, the red is not included, so. But they're pretty straightforward stripes. There's red on the top, obviously. There's red here. Um, it would be kind of challenging if you wanted to light it at all. I'm not sure that that would be something that would be necessary. Uh, but you could do some painting with it. Use your imagination on it. So, all right. Definitely pretty interesting. A cool little subject. And like I said, it really harkens back to the, the retro future uh, designs that they were coming up with in the early 60s when we were looking to go to the moon. All right, so really cool kit. Uh, it's a nice little subject matter. I was always interested in, in those uh, classic future retro types of things back in the 50s and the 60s when we were looking to go to the moon or going into space and just coming up with ideas of space stations and spaceships and in this case, a moon suit. So, all right. Uh, I don't have any immediate, immediate plans to build it, uh, but I will somewhere down the road. Uh, it's a nice, cool little model, and it shouldn't be too difficult. I'm not going to look at any kind of lighting or anything added to it other than just building it as is. So, all right. Well, thanks again to all my new subscribers, and I will see you in the next video.